It's 7.15 on April 16, 2007. The police have just received a phone call from the southern end of the, of the Virginia Tech campus saying that they heard shots fired. By the time the police arrive, they find two people have been shot and killed and multiple people have been wounded. At 8.25, the Virginia Tech officials meet to discuss whether they should notify the students about what's happened. They eventually decide that they should, but that email doesn't go out for another hour. Now at 9.45, the police receive yet another call, this time from the north end of campus, saying that they'd heard more shots fired. And in the 14 minutes that it takes the police to respond to this call, um, the, a shooter, who now know to be a man named Sung Hee Cho, had used that time to barricade and chain up the three main entrances to the building and systematically kill 31 people. By the time the police finally arrived, they only were, heard one shot, just Cho killing himself. Now, I wonder what defense did the students have in response to this, this vicious attack? Well, they really didn't. The best defense that they had was to run and hide. Take the example of uh, one engineering professor. He looked out into the hallway and saw Cho coming. So he went and he barricaded the door while the students escaped out the window. Now, during this time when he was trying to hold Cho back, Cho shot him through the door multiple times and eventually once ahead, killing him. Now, in the wake of these, this horrible tragedy, as well as the 40 other school shootings that have happened since 1990, one question keeps coming up. Was there something, anything, that anybody could have done to stop or prevent these things from happening? I believe that there is, and I believe that this solution centers around transferring the responsibility for safety back to the students and allowing them to defend themselves. Now, uh, the University of Washington currently prohibits uh, students from possessing and using firearms on campus, and I believe that the UW should get rid of this system and allow those who have earned the right to, uh, to carry a gun on campus. So I want to take the next few minutes to explain this, what this policy will actually look like and then explain how it can actually keep us safe. So, now a lot of you, when I first brought this topic up, were kind of scared of the idea of a bunch of amateur, impulsive, young students running around with guns. And I agree completely with, with that, because that's not at all what I'm uh, advocating. Well, I'm, what I'm saying is the people that have earned the right to carry a concealed life weapons license uh, for the whole state of Washington, that they be able to enjoy the same right to defend and protect themselves on campus that they do off campus. Now I want to take some time just to, just to uh, describe what it actually takes to get a concealed weapons license in the state of Washington. You have to be over 21, a U.S. citizen, not convicted of a felony, not diagnosed with any mental condition, and not standing trial. Now, um, in addition to that, you also have to submit to a 30-day a, a uh, waiting period with an addition of a background check. Now those criteria alone eliminates the vast majority of people who would be irresponsible and dangerous with a gun. But in addition to that requirement, I would also add that, um, that we should add maybe an education requirement to that, uh, to that specification so that people have a standardized knowledge of what safe firearm use actually is. So now we kind of, you have an idea of what my policy actually looks like. Um, I want to take it a second to describe what this actually looks like and how it can keep us secure. I believe it can keep our campus secure for two reasons. One, because the police cannot be everywhere at once and because um, the responsibility of the students to defend themselves should ultimately fall to the students. Now, uh, I got a chance to talk to, prof to uh, the president, Mark Emmerich, uh, after class when he came and he discussed a concern that he had that the police department um, should be the only ones with guns and that they should be in charge of protecting us. Which I agree if we lived in a perfect world, but we clearly don't. Um, take for example a case that happened in Washington, D.C. Uh, in, in about in 2000, three women called the police uh, asking them to come and investigate a, um, a, suspicious, a suspicious individual that had been lurking around their apartment complex. Through a series of technical difficulties and, um, and the dispatcher dropping the ball, the police didn't show up for another 14 hours. Now in the course of that 14 hours that the police didn't show up, that suspicious individual had taken that time to, um, to rape and force these three women to do just horrible, unspeakable things to each other. 
And um, so in response to that, those three women sued the police department of Washington, D.C., saying that they had failed to protect them. The uh, a judge that presided over that case actually ended up throwing the case out because they said that, that while the police have the power and the ability to protect, they're not liable and they're not obligated to protect their citizens. That combined with the, uh, the fact that the total time that the, uh, the shootings took place at Virginia Tech was nine minutes um, solidifies the idea that the police, while uh, they are there to protect us, can't be everywhere at once and can't guarantee our safety. Now the second reason I believe that guns should be allowed on campus is because I believe that people should be responsible for their own safety. Um, and really, all it takes is one person in the right place to make a positive difference. Take for example, in 2000, a, uh, a high schooler, disgruntled and, uh, and angry at the students of that high school, um, got a gun, came to the school, and started shooting people. Now in the middle of that uh, event, the assistant principal ran out into his truck, grabbed his 45 handgun, and held the student down and, while the police arrived, and waited for the police to arrive. See, that one guy's act of bravery and um, an ability to defend not only himself, but to take care of his students, um, saved countless lives. That shooter related went on to admit that he planned to go to the middle school to continue his good. So for those two reasons, police can't be everywhere at once, and their protection is not always perfect and that one person really can make a difference. I believe that allowing guns on campus can make a difference. So in conclusion, what I'm advocating is that guns be used kind of like a life jacket. Now bear with me for a second while I explain this. Um, now a life jacket is there to protect you from, uh, from drowning and possibly death. It only works if you use it properly and if um, and what it does is it allows you to not only take care of yourself, but in the event of emergency, to protect and take care of others. Now, I honestly, I hope to God that nobody um, actually needs to use either a gun or a life jacket. But in the event that it, the need arises, it's there. So for the same logic, that's why I believe that guns should be allowed on campus and that the university should lift the ban on concealed carry.